Hi, I'm Jack Cush from Dallas, Texas. I want to talk to you about serologies in RA. Does it really matter that you're seropositive or seronegative? And if it does, how so? You know, rheumatoid factor is how we all sort of got into seropositivity and the, the marker, if, we, if you will, for rheumatoid arthritis. It's been around for, you know, back in the 30s, um, uh, antibodies to, um, uh, were found that were linked to rheumatoid arthritis. And initially it was by Rose and Waller, it became the Rose-Waller test. Had a lot of specificity, not so much good sensitivity, later became the sensitized sheep cell agglutination. Uh, assay. We now know that um, uh, rheumatoid factor positivity seen in roughly 80% of patients. That equates to over 20 million Americans who are rheumatoid factor positive. But we know rheumatoid factor, um, very sensitive, not quite as specific as anti-CCP antibodies or ACPA antibodies. We do know that rheumatoid factor seropositivity doesn't relate to disease activity. Whereas ACPA does. ACPA relates to both risk and severity uh, and disease activity. Um, we do know for both rheumatoid factor and ACPA, the higher the titer, the greater the concern, uh, especially when it comes to ACPA and the development of RA in people who may be at risk. Rheumatoid factor is seen in people who may not have rheumatoid arthritis. And we deal with this as in doing consults all the time especially people with chronic lung disease. I'm going to say that again. Chronic lung disease, ILD, bronchiectasis, even COPD, those patients have a higher risk of rheumatoid factors that are not pathogenic, that are not a marker for RA unless they have synovitis. This often gets confused when they have OA, chronic lung disease, and they're seropositive, uh, and you're calling in to judge that. Um, it's seen also in chronic liver disease, in chronic renal disease, with infections, especially parasitic infections, um, and with neoplasia. CCP is not uncommonly seen uh, also in chronic lung disease, especially ILD. It can be seen in people who have the antisynthetase syndrome, and, and up to 15% of patients with psoriatic arthritis will have CCP antibodies. We do know that seronegativity is common, and for that reason, you need to have a strategy regarding seronegativity. I think seronegativity means this is different. I mean, it looks like rheumatoid, smells like rheumatoid, responds like rheumatoid, but it's different. And hence, you should always, with seronegative RA, be considering another diagnosis. It's your invitation to do so. The problem with seronegative RA is it's not studied as well. Often these patients are excluded from clinical trials. They're not often represented well in, in population-based studies. There are greater delays in the diagnosis, so they don't get onto your um, um, clinic agenda as readily as seropositives may. So, like, what can this be? Seronegatives can be a lot of different things. I like to say that, you know, it could be PMR, it can be chikungunya, it can be rheumatoid arthritis as a result of... Um, checkpoint inhibitor therapy for cancer. A Finnish study done by Tuliki Soka a number of years ago looked at 435 patients with seronegative RA. They found that in, with a long follow-up, only 3% of them evolved into clear-cut RA, meaning they had erosions or they became seropositive. Only 3%. Um, Two-thirds went on to show themselves to be another diagnosis. Lead amongst those was 16% with PMR, 20% with SPA, meaning either ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis, 10% with OA, and 4% with pseudogout or CPPD disease. That accounts for about 50% of that two-thirds. One-third of patients never changed their designation, hence they remained seronegative RA. It's important to think about this when you're seeing these patients. Seronegative RA patients actually have to, and usually do, manifest higher levels of disease activity at diagnosis. Think about it. They don't have the benefit of seropositivity to make the diagnosis. So they often have to make up with that by having more disease or more active disease. Uh, whether they have more um, um, remissions or not is kind of debated in the literature. 
So what does seronegative mean? Does it mean it's self-limiting? Does it mean there's a misdiagnosis? Does it mean that it's just a chronic form of arthritis and I don't know what else to call it? Again, I think these are questions that you need to know. Lastly, it turns out that seronegatives respond to therapy just as well as seropositives. And that's important to know. Seropositivity, as I, as I said, dates back to the 1930s. Um, we do know seropositivity confers certainty of diagnosis. It homogenizes the patients that you call rheumatoid arthritis and hence makes them really good candidates for studies. As I said earlier, causes of, of, of rheumatoid factor positivity could be age, sarcoid, uh, pulmonary fibrosis, parasites, PBC, primary biliary cirrhosis, cryoglobulinemia, etc. ACPA, we said, can also occur in chronic lung disease. But know that having ACPA, if you don't yet have RA, confers about a 30 to 60% risk of developing RA. And the higher the tire, the more likely. Obviously, it gets closer to 60 if you're a first degree relative, if you have more than just arthralgias, like having either an abnormal MR or ultrasound or an elevated acute phase reactant. Again, it confers specificity of, the, of diagnosis and it imparts a severity. Higher titers and multiplicity of autoantibodies that suggest rheumatoid arthritis are often, are you always, almost always associated with more severe disease. Having ACPA, especially in higher titers, means more X-ray damage and erosions, higher mortality rates, less chance at remission. And again, the we all know that these autoantibodies exist for 10, even 15 years, but usually 10 years before. Hence, the question is, are they pathogenic? We really don't know that. There isn't a lot of evidence that these cause disease directly, but we do know that um, these can be found in people with preclinical RA in the sputum, in the lung, uh, found in out bronchoalveolar lavage, and finding ACPA antibodies in the lung, which I think is one of the earliest signs of RA, um, increases the odds that that person is going to progress to clinically manifest RA with swollen joints. Lastly, there's an advantage here to the serologies. If you're seropositive, you can have a 10 to 20% higher response if you use rituximab, evidence from the reflex study, or abatacept, evidence from, my goodness, from the Apipra study, the ARIA study, the ASCEND study, there's a whole bunch of studies with uh, abatacept. And lastly, I think there's mounting evidence that seropositivity gives you an augmented response if you use a JAK inhibitor. I cannot say the same about seropositivity influencing the response of people taking either methotrexate, DMARDS, hydroxychloroquine, TNF inhibitors, or IL-6 inhibitors. So again, it is valuable to get serologies. I do recommend that you get rheumatoid factor and CCP. I don't know the value of CAR-P uh, antibodies or 1433-ADA, but I do recommend those two because I think it will help shape your thinking uh, and tell you what you should be thinking about when following these patients. Take care.